Yeah, between dog and wolf is a, I think it's a French expression. It relates to that evening hour when the sun's gone down and the light is fading. It's getting dark and you, you can't tell at a certain distance whether you're looking at a dog or a wolf. So there's a, a kind of um, an untethering of the definition of things. One way to think about it is things start to turn kind of bluish. Yeah, I think that the, those kind of everyday moments seem to, to keep springing up in my work. They seem to have an importance to me because they are things that I encounter every day regularly. So they make up most of my experience of the world in a way. Things that, that might seem banal, so they, they kind of slide under our radar on a daily basis. In some ways I think because of that they actually they accrue to have a bigger effect on our lives than maybe anything else. Those things that we don't tend to notice. I think I also, you know, gravitate towards suburban spaces as in-between kinds of spaces that are like where I grew up in Lynn Valley, where the, the houses stop and the forest starts. Moving out to Suwassen, um, I think fairly quickly I realized that it was bringing back memories of growing up in Lynn Valley. I remember going on walks in the, in the woods, my dad saying that all the trees were second growth trees. And as a kid that, that made no sense because these trees were so huge. Years later when I looked at all these old photographs of Lynn Valley being totally logged off. I sort of realized that there was this whole other reality, this whole other landscape there. And of course, there the First Nations, the Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish peoples, you know, that's their ancestral land. Th those were histories that I had no awareness of at all as a child. So now I'm realizing that I was uh, growing up there as an uninvited guest on these unceded territories, and that dramatically shifts those landscapes for me again. So the landscapes and the spaces are never one thing. They're always multiple. Like the architecture of the fence, those hard straight lines with the plant coming out and it has its own, it has its own incredible formal logic that's so different. And the sunflower out the top again is quite, quite different and you get that circular aspect and the yellow of the sunflower next to this gas plate in the sidewalk and the yellow lines on the street and the asphalt all these things kind of set one another up in a different way or ask us to look at each of the different elements quite differently. Maybe culturally we're kind of predisposed to look for bigger more sensational things where you know, we want to travel, we want to experience the world, and, and we leave our, our home, our, the region that we're living in, to do that. And um, I mean, that can be wonderful and it can open up our thinking. We can experience different peoples, different cultures, different ways of understanding the world, and, and that is hugely important and rich. But um, there might be a, a bit of an expense of, of us uh, not paying attention to to the things that are really close at hand. In a way, the word banal doesn't really mean anything to me anymore. It's, it, it kind of undoes itself fairly quickly because if you find a banal, a supposedly banal or everyday moment and you, you look at it a little bit, spend some time thinking about it, it quickly becomes quite complex and attaches to much broader issues. It's, it's no longer banal, it's actually quite rich. And in some ways, it, it might not be the things themselves, actually. It might be um, just 
it might be as much about trying to really be present in the moment of just paying attention. So in some ways, maybe, maybe the subject matter of my work is, is about paying attention. Mm-hmm. <laughs>